foundation trusts go against the grain of the original NHS. Every hospital in England now must become an independent business entity. Breaking up hospitals into foundation trusts is essential to achieve privatisation. By breaking them up into small chunks you make it easier to pick them off one by one. It is a form of concealed destruction, divide and rule. Bankruptcy, what will happen then? I really do not understand the point of this target except to make hospitals independent organisations not accountable to anybody except monitor. There's a lot of very competent and very dedicated managers in the NHS, but they're faced with a very difficult dilemma. They are making continual trade-offs between the best interests of their organisation, the political directives which are coming down from on high, and the day-to-day -day problems of running their complicated and complex trusts. The reality of foundation trusts means uh, allowing hospital trusts a degree of financial and other independence, which of course must have seemed uh, very attractive to them. But the flip side of that uh, is that if they do run up large debts and they can't be bailed out like, by the Department of Health. The use of language would have delighted Orwell. Um, these things are labelled meaningless terms, which then change, the, change and the, the underlying problem doesn't change. You know, you, you've got to have hospitals, you've got to staff them, you've got to have beds. Um, and, and calling them a different name is just, is just meaningless. It's the same as the term patient choice. It's an empowering term, but patient choice is all about turning citizens into consumers to consume healthcare in a, in a market, which in a single payer system, when you've got a a fixed ceiling of income, you know, driving people to consume, consumers consume, it, it, it's crazy because you will bankrupt the healthcare system. Hospital trusts are merging, but mergers are simply a code for major closures of hospitals, accident and emergency departments and services. I don't think the public are aware that these foundation trusts can now raise funds on the open market, uh, they can earn up to 49% of their income from private patients. People are actually considering each trust as a business and you must not talk to the opposition. Anytime that you see the word hospital trust or hospital trust merger, you should be thinking service closure and staff cuts and reductions. And there's not a single merger in the country that isn't going ahead that's not predicated upon that. And the coalition has even set up a government-owned company called Propco to assist all this. This is the sell-off of your NHS. It's intrinsically related to the Mid-Staffordshire uh, problem, which was desperate to get to foundation trust status, tried to hit all its financial targets, put those financial targets first, and what that meant was, in order to save money to hit those targets, it had to cut staff. The disaster there is a prime example of how the market reforms and the privatisation has led directly to patient harm. Indeed, it said pressure on management to put financial performance first and the enthusiasm with which management embraced this goal was what resulted in management cutting ward staffing below the minimum where safe care was possible. So if you were the NHS, which in a sense you are, do you feel under attack? Of course, absolutely. When you have these trusts going bust, then you can either close down those hospitals, those NHS hospitals and the services they provide, or you can possibly bring in a private provider to take them over. Um, so it's, it's, a, um, it's definitely a deliberate strategy in this process. Patients will be starting to wonder uh, when you know care is starting to be rationed, when finances are, are, are very tight. You know, is the doctor you know doing what's best for me, or or are they prescribing that treatment or not prescribing that treatment because it's cheaper or it's too expensive? Uh, and that really undermines that trust, which is right at the heart of medicine. And that that's what's embittering and angering so many doctors, because we feel it's just you know breaking the heart of of the profession, uh, and and that doctor-patient relationship, the social contract.